What this material shows are three key things. Number one, it shows that inside the prosecutor task force, they were talking openly about how they wanted me to make sure that the Workers' Party lost the election. Um, and we can talk about the specifics, but in particular, there was a judge who authorized Lula to give an interview from prison 12 days before the election, and they panicked, and they said, we need to stop this, because if Lula is allowed to be heard from, he will ha there's a good chance he will make PT win the election, and we need to put a stop to this. They said they were praying every day that PT doesn't return to power, PT being the Workers' Party. So this five-year claim that they had, we don't have any preferences for parties, we don't care who wins elections, was an absolute lie. They were talking openly and explicitly about how their top priority was making sure PT didn't win the election, exactly what people have been accusing them of. Secondly, just like in the U.S., a judge is required to be neutral. A judge can't favor one side or the other. And there's long been a suspicion that Judge Morrow, when he was ruling on these cases, like finding Lula guilty, finding other left-wing leaders guilty and people from other parties guilty, that he was, in fact, collaborating in secret with the prosecutors to design the case. They vehemently and angrily denied this accusation. The head of the prosecutorial task force, who's a national hero in Brazil, Delton Dallengal, wrote a book in which he said, these accusations are outrageous, they're disgusting. We have video of Judge Morrow being asked about this, and he was so angry about it that he actually scoffed at it with a smile, saying people talk about this as being as though it's Judge Morrow's prosecution or Judge Morrow's strategy. Um, he said, people don't understand. Judges in Brazil have no role in prosecuting people. Our value is one of passivity. We simply listen to both sides, listen to the evidence, and make decisions. What the conversations that we publish show between Judge Morrow and the head of the prosecutorial task force is that Judge Morrow, in fact, was constantly directing, constructing, designing the entire prosecution, screaming at them when he, they were doing things that he thought were wrong, telling them how to better fortify the case, not just against Lula, but against other people. He was basically the commander of the prosecutorial team and then walking into court as though he were sitting judging Lula's case and others as a neutral arbiter. So everything that they vehemently denied to the public they were doing, in, that, that in fact, they were doing for years, as these documents show. And then the third uh, key revelation, as you said, is that the specific case for which they prosecuted Lula, namely the charge that he had received a, what they call a triplex apartment, in order to make it sound very glamorous, when in fact it's kind of run down and shoddy, and Lula had the capability to buy it a 100,000 times over if he wanted, but the charge was he received this triplex apartment and renovations to it in exchange for helping this construction company get contracts, that they knew themselves three days before they indicted him, that they didn't have the evidence sufficient to show his guilt or even to justify why this case belonged with them. But they just decided they were going to go forward anyway because they knew they had a judge in Judge Morrow, now Minister Morrow, single-mindedly devoted to the goal of imprisoning Lula, and not just imprisoning him, but doing so in time to make him ineligible to run for 2018's election out of fear that PT would win the election. So the consequences of this revelation have been enormous because Moro, as I said, is the second most powerful person in Brazil after Bolsonaro, but he's by far the most respected person, or at least was the most respected person. And even his most ardent and loyal defenders, in light of these revelations, have said there's no way to defend this conduct.